Hello and welcome to another edition of Drop In Bombs with me, your host, Corey Ballmeister. As always with the lovely folks over at StarCityGames.com. All right, Modern had quite the shakeup here a couple of weeks ago with the banning of Hogak, uh, the Risen ne Necropolis, as well as Faithless looting. It really gave every deck a chance to play much more fair cards. And speaking of fair cards, we unbanned a fair card that some are going to say is fair. Some are going to say is absolutely busted and it should be banned as well. Stoneforge Mystic makes an appearance in this banned Soul Herder deck to be able to have that extra power that the deck really wants as well as the pure engine that Banned Soul Herder has where you just are never running out of gas with this deck. The matchups are a ton of fun to play. Fast forward to any of the games below um, if you want to check any of them out as well as fast forward to the deck tech. If you want spoilers, don't go to the deck tech right away. But in the deck tech, I gave you an in-depth look at why uh, all the different card choices were chosen. And all right, everybody, you all enjoy the games. All right, and welcome to round one here with Bant Soul Herder. All right, so we are on the draw. Uh, looks like our opponent kept. Our hand is a little rough, though. Five land is a few too many. Most of the time, this deck is completely content on three land, um, as well as uh, that fifth land almost being a mulligan already. So I think we are going to ship this back. Okay, this is good. This is a perfectly fine hand. Uh, we're going to keep... I think we're going to get rid of one of these lands here. Yeah, we'll get rid of Vista. We'll keep these. More than likely Stoneforge Mystic on two, which I also just haven't been able to cast Stoneforge yet, so I'm uh, I'm pretty excited to be throwing some Batter Skulls into play. Oh. Okay. Tome Scour is pretty nice in Dredge. I like it. I like it. Okay, it doesn't replace itself, so that might be a little bit of a problem, but we'll see. This could be a bad matchup. This really could be. All right, we're going to play Misty Rainforest, ship it back. Okay, nothing too heavy from this one. We hope we don't see a reunion, a cathartic reunion. That would be bad. We do have Rest in Peace on the board for this, which really helps. Um, yeah, Rest in Peace will definitely be our, our most important card, but otherwise we have like a Scavenging Ooze and not a ton of hate for this, so we... I'm a little, t I'm a little frightened. Okay, coming in for four. I uh, shall take it. Now I probably want to get Breeding Pool with this. Uh-oh, not a reunion. Oh no, this could be bad. Okay, I guess nothing comes back immediately this turn, so that helps, but yikes. We'll see what we can do here. Sacrifice this, and I guess we may actually want to get like Prairie Stream. And then with Flooded Strand, we could get Breeding Pool if need be. Kind of covers all our bases. We'll go like that. Prairie Stream, of course, does come into play tapped here without having a bunch of other snow basics. Ice Fang, not exactly what we wanted here, but I think it just has to be Stoneforge here. Go get a Batter Skull and kind of ride that plan out. Nothing else really has the high impact that uh, this would have. But, I mean, our opponent does still have uh, um, Conflagrate in the graveyard, so that is a bit of a problem. But having to waste it on Stoneforge is better than uh, um, throwing it at my face. All right, we got chilled. Yeah, this is going to be a tough one to win. If we were on the play, maybe. You know, if we were attacking or putting a Batter Skull into play this turn, this would be a lot different of a game, but a little tougher when you're on the draw. So two conflagrates in there. We got prized amalgams. We got all the goods in there. Maybe they don't have a land as well. I guess if we take this, we just die, huh? We go to five, they just conflagrate our face. All right, we're just in trouble. Tome Scour is really interesting coming out of Dredge. I didn't really like the Thought Scours because it's, it's not seeing that many cards. Sure, you do get to Dredge, but it's nothing you can start your dredging off with. There's Life of the Loam. Blood Gas comes back. A bunch of prized amalgams come back. Then we will untap and concede because there's nothing we can do about this. Okay, let's see what we got. So they don't run a lot of basics. So our paths are actually okay. We for sure want Rest in Peace. 
Uh, Purge is okay, nothing too great. I actually like uh, Stonehorn here. If we can ever lock them up uh, with uh, Soul Herder, they just can't attack. I mean, they still need to get some hits in um, with Dredge to be able to actually finish you off. It's pretty tough to just go chill, conflagrate you, um, although it is definitely possible. We don't need Knight of Autumns. I like Spell Pierce because you can hit Reunion. Other than that, none of these cards scream out to me. We'll see how many cards we need to take out. Um, let's see here. Deputy seems okay. Deputy actually seems pretty strong. Forces are pretty good. I almost think there should be more Force of Negation in this deck. That card is just so important. Ice Fang, I think we can trim on. I think Calling Oracle is a little better because if you draw land, you get to also kind of ramp your way up. And Watcher for Tomorrow is, is I think, one of the better ones. I was pretty skeptic about it right away, but... You just get to dig for so many cards that are really relevant. We'll take out one uh, uh, Ephemerate here. I think this is the configuration we want here. We may have a few too many pass. I could easily see that being the case and maybe we would rather have Ephemerate. Yeah, let's try that because Ephemerate is very important. Could also be Thrag Test here to kind of get out of it. Yeah, let's do that. We'll go three and three on those. One Spell Pierce. Um, we have all the hate in. Rest in Peace is, of course, the card we're still trying to find here. But we got a lot of interesting ways that we can attack Dredge here, which is nice. All right, I will go first. Okay, this sounds fine. I mean, we don't have any, you know, severe hate right away, but Stoneforge on the play and getting Batter Skull is a lot better than on the draw. So I think we're going to keep this. And then we could Ephemerate it if we want. That's not the best use of uh, Ephemerate because you only have one other target. But just batter scrolling to get out of range here is uh, a very solid plan. All right, let's see how far Dredge is mulliganing here. Down to six. Dredge is one of those decks similar to Tron that just mulligans insanely well. Um, obviously, things have changed a little bit without Faithless looting. The deck got worse, quote unquote, but the deck is still very powerful. Breeding Pool, I think, is going to be the get here. Or actually, we probably want Prairie Stream because going to have to actually get just basic planes is pretty bad because you have cards like Coaling, uh, Coaling Oracle. Huh? Faithless Looting? Just kidding. Okay, Shriek Horn coming down. We will sacrifice this. Go get that Prairie Stream. Start our turn. And now it's going to be close whether or not we Oracle here, especially without hitting a land. I kind of want to Oracle just because if we hit a land that can search up white, we kind of just get to go off here. So let's do it. So we got to get a forest here. Oracle. And then this also digs us a little closer to maybe find rest in peace. Land. No. No dredgers yet. This should be an upkeep Shriekhorn. That was a pretty good Shriekhorn. But still no dredgers. So not the worst. But a couple of creatures are coming back to play. Now, once again, we're afraid of Reunion. All right, Blood Gas coming back here. No Reunion plus Dredger, please. Uh-oh. Okay, that's way, way, way better. Okay, good draw, good draw. Now I kind of want to just go Stoneforge Mystic. Stoneforge Mystic plus Ephemerate and just start digging through our deck with Oracle and then get a Batter Skull down. I think that's our best play here. Plus we get to block Blood Gas and then Ephemerate it. We're playing that fair magic, but sometimes a 4-4 batter skull can just uh, be unfair. Okay, another blood ghast. Nothing too scary. Golgari thug in the yard. A little bit better of a dredger. They probably should have did that during their draw step in case they hit stinkweed it. Um, anytime you don't have your best dredger in the yard. I know this is not a dredge video, but, you know, always uh, looking to look for opportunities to learn. Anytime you don't have the five mana dredger, which is your best stink weed imp, I would always activate Shriek Horn during your draw step. Okay, we're gonna do this. We're gonna block here, ephemerate. Now, if they go uh, conflagrate for zero and then conflagrate here, I think I'm still okay with them spending their turn doing that because that's not that big of a deal. Another land, not too bad. And we just soaked up a little bit of damage. It's a little bit worse if they do do that because then our uh, ephemerate will do nothing essentially next turn. So I could definitely see them doing that play. And that kind of looks to be the case. 
They have to have another red mana, but I think they used a red sack land to bring this out and then brought it back with Life of the Loam. Let's see here. Life of the Loam returns to red sack lands. Yep, so if they do have Conflagrate, that is a play they can do. Ooh, so they're not doing that. Let's hope they didn't hit it. They did not, but they did hit an Ancient Grudge. I guess we're not gonna be attacking this turn anyways. All right, Forgotten Cave to do a little bit more dredging. Another Bloodgast. <clears throat> so this land drop will bring back two. We definitely wanna find some extra hate here. Like a Force Negation would be great, rest in peace. Anything to be able to strip the graveyard before we wanna start kind of going off. All right, we definitely want a blue mana source here. All right, we get another look with Culling Oracle here. Our value will be just as much as the value that Dredge brings. There we go. There we go, okay. So we are going to start with this. Rest in peace. Okay, bye bye everything. Now we could go Soul Herder to kind of start comboing off, but it's, it's Batter Skull time. We are just going to start getting that online so we don't get cheesed out here by a bunch of these two ones. Now their graveyard's starting over. So even if they do kill Rest in Peace, we're heavily advantaged. Because now they're going to start trying to play a fair game and Dredge just dropping a couple little creatures is the fair game I want to play. That's for sure. And then we get to start going like Soul Herder plus Watcher. Like our value is endless. This deck does not run out of steam. That's just one of the beauties of this deck. And one reason why I really wanted to showcase this deck, I thought it was so sweet. Yeah, that, that scares me because they know we're batter sculling. A living weapon coming down. Here comes an ancient grudge, I would guess. We're still gonna block because these blood gas go away. Didn't they know we had that? Wow, we just get to do it? Hooray! Nature's claim, okay. So now they're just gonna start this graveyard going again. Pretty strong, they had to choose between is their graveyard more important or is getting batter skull off. And I mean, both are very bad for them, so I'm, I'm okay with this. So probably a life of the loam maybe? Or a reunion to kind of start rebuilding the graveyard? They definitely have to get something going here. But now while they try to rebuild, we get a setup turn and that's kind of all this deck really wants in this matchup. And then we can start trying to find another rest in peace or even a force of negation is gonna be insane. I kind of think this deck should have more force of negations. I just think that card's insane right now. And in a deck that has this much value where you just need to be tapping out, that's gonna be my one criticism. And I think we should go up to four. Um, I found this list from the SCG and I thought it was awesome. Um, but I think we should up the force of negation numbers from two to four. Our opponent's deep in the tank. So this might be a Life of the Loam bringing back just Gemstone Mine. Well, because they still have another sack land in their hand too. So they could return two lands if they wanted, but they do strip mine themselves with the Gemstone. So next turn, looking forward, I probably want to go something like Soul Herder, Culling Oracle or Soul Herder Watcher because right now Soul Herder doesn't have a good blink target. Like blinking mystic to go get the sword of feast and famine is pretty good but it's not insane against dredge by any means maybe even a, a reason to take the card out actually but then if you draw batter skull playing mystic becomes a lot worse okay here comes the blood gas yeah it'll be interesting to play watcher oak or coraling oracle because what i really want is a force negation and watcher gives us four looks at that so it's probably just gonna be that, realistically. So this is probably a self mill and then life of the loam. Okay, creeping chill we don't really care about. We're gonna gain enough life to uh, kind of get out of range. But they did hit a land which gives them full value off life of the loam, which is a big deal. If it wasn't exiled, I guess I... No, they, sh they should have one of those in hand. Okay, we're gonna get blue mana. Another soul herder is not ideal. Now we're not gonna block with Stoneforge Mystic here. So we're gonna get in for five. We're gonna start getting a little aggressive. Getting a little froggy, if you will. All right, so we're gonna go for Watcher because I really just want to find a Force Negation. And then we can Soul Herd it out, bring it into our hand, plus the value train kind of continues. And we got there. Bingo. All right, that was ideal. Now we can interact while we're tapped out. And that should uh, 
Definitely help us uh, lock this game down, if not lock it up. I never really think games are locked up against Dredge. All of a sudden, they're like, oh, mill over half my deck, take 19. I'll be like, oh, cool. Nice. Okay, so Spell Pierce is probably still a pretty decent piece of interaction. All we want to do is interact. We have the battlefield on lock. All right. Two prize amalgams. That's scary. Okay, so now they're coming back. Pretty strong dredges. They didn't find an actual dredger, but they did find seven power flipped over. So we're going to be getting rid of a soul herder here. We just don't really need three of them, but... We just don't have enough creatures that gain us value. Okay, so this is net even. So we're actually just taking one with this exchange. I think you'd just attack with narco. I'd just attack with narco me, but if they were, if I was them. <clears throat> mm -hmm. This is just net even on damage. Okay. Gave us an opportunity to block with soul herder. Make a mistake. I like the attack. They're not doing anything on defense, so. Now we want to be selective of what we counter here because there's important things and there's not important things. And it looks like this is going to be a conflagrate. We're not going to counter the front half, but the flashback half, we may have something to say about that. That one resolves. Before the next conflagrate, I have responses, please. This is going to be some value here. This might even warrant the concession, to be honest. Because now they're going to want to spray four, five, six, seven. They only have five, so they can kill the germ, soul herder, plus watcher. Or you just care about soul herder and germ. And then keep a land or keep a life of the loam or something. Regardless, it's going to work out well for us. All right, our opponent's deep in the tank. Probably remembering that force and negation is a real magic card. Yeah, these dredge games are really tough until they're not. You know, I mean, if you find that piece of hate or you find some pressure backed up by a force of negation, that's kind of all you need, right? I wonder if this would have been a different game if they just hit Batter Skull instead of uh, the rest in peace and just ignored their graveyard. I feel like once our opponent conflagrated for zero, they were committed, but now they're second guessing their choices here. I think they just realized there's nothing I can do. If they have it, they have it. And we have it. All right, so discards their entire hand. I would like to cast by exiling a card from my hand. Force. Okay. Now we got some friends coming back. Ooh, Sword of Feast and Famine. Actually pretty bad right now because whatever we strap it to, they can just block. So... And we don't really want to lose Soul Herder. So do we just attack with Germ here? Maybe. We don't really want to lose this combo either. So unfortunately, we're just going to get in there with Germ. They're really just out of gas, though. At this point, it's, it's I think, going to be pretty trivial. Because if they leave back prized amalgams to stop Germ, we just get to strap it with a Sword of Feast and Famine. So we're going to go with Culling Oracle... See if we hit. We did not. Okay, so now I really want to be able to spell pierce this uh, Life of the Loam to really just kind of be a time walk. So with that being the case, I think I'm just going to play Noble Hierarch here. Actually, I'm not even going to play Noble Hierarch. I'm just going to uh, activate Stoneforge plus spell pierce. All right, we'll get our spell pierce here. See what else we got hiding. Let's find a new piece of interaction. What about rest in peace to end this game outright? Fortunately, we won't be able to get that until not next turn, but the turn after. But we'll be able to control the game with Spell Pierce and just sort of feast and famine. Here comes Life Alone, which is going to get promptly countered by us. No blood gas then. All right, trying to find any more goodies. No such luck. Their graveyard's pretty empty. All right, I would like to cast one mana time walk and concession. <laughs> nope, fighting the good fight, I like it. All right, we will bring this in. They have one chump blocker for this for one turn and then uh, it'll kind of run rampant. All right, so we want to strap this to germ. 
Gonna strap it here. So these blood or prized amalgams cannot block. And then we will play a noble hierarch. And we're just gonna play this soul herder in case they let this uh, creature connect, which I highly doubt, but we're still gonna gain six. Just get out of complete range where there's just no chance they can uh, cobble together this much damage. So death to this, we'll do a little blinking. All right, first one on Watcher, second one on Calling Oracle. Remember, you cannot target the same thing because it becomes a different copy. I fell for that trick right away, so <laughs> I wanted to make sure you all didn't. Okay, that should be game. Okay. Yeah, just too much life. You know, they're, they're, they don't have enough resources in their deck. Okay. So Celestial Purge is something I'm considering, but they don't really run that many basics where Path is probably just better. All right, I think I like everything else here. Um, on the draw, it's gonna be tougher. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. That's kind of how we got destroyed last time. Because Dredge can just be a little faster, unfortunately. But I don't really see any changes. Ice Fang is probably the worst because drawing a card is just a little too slow. I mean, if, if they're going Reunion, Dredge, 15 cards, bring in Prized Amalgams, Narc Amoebas, Blood Gas, take six, and we just go one mana flash, draw a card, like that, that feels bad. But our other options are great. I would love two more Force of Negations in, in that place just to be able to counter those uh, turn two Cathartic Reunions because if you can counter that, it's just insane. It's insane. They miss out on the cards they have to discard. You still get to progress your board. That's the exact configuration I'd want if we have two more. I'd get these two out, two forces in. We still have a bunch of blue cards. It, it would be, or I'd take out some pass actually. Maybe we just also don't have time for Thrag Test. No, nah, it seems fine. Okay, game three here with Bant Soul Herder. Nice, this hand is great. This hand is great. Everything I love about magic in one hand. Stoneforge Mystic, cheap counter spells, free counter spells, and value. Let's go. Now the question is, what are we going to do turn one? Because I kind of just want to spell pierce and then Stoneforge on two. Because I'm not going to force a negation of Shriekhorn or a Time Scour or um, the one blue uh, card there. Yep. Times, or Tome Scour, okay. One Dredger, so they are kind of getting online. So maybe I just play the Noble anyways? Nah, we're just gonna hold up Spell Pierce and play Stoneforge on two. And then we can have Force Negation with the Watcher. Like we can counter the next two plays, which is pretty big. All right, now it's blanks in the yard. So now they have to play stuff from their hand. The exact situation I want them in. Reunion. Reunion, re. I usually don't cheer for the worst card or for their best card in their deck to be cast, but right now, reunion. Yeah, the real question is would I counter a Life of the Loam? That would be tough. All right, so we're gonna go get a blue source here, white, stone forge, and now we'll have a counter spell to back it up. Let's get the batter skull. Try to pad our life total. And now we have a deputy to discard too. Watcher and deputy are both pretty medium. Um, and spell pierce is gonna not be great for a while here too. So no dredging going on. They probably thought I was gonna cast rest in peace. So they held up like nature's claim or something like this. See, they might be playing a little scared. And you, you might say, well, maybe they don't have the reunion, but they did have a thug. They could have cast something. They wanted to leave mana open for something. That's a good thing to think about. Like, why would they not cast the two mana dredger? They either were playing around a counter spell or they wanted to cast something on my turn in response to it. Now I think I'm just gonna say go. Batter Skull plus Spell Pierce backup with a force. I mean, may the force be with me. Okay, we're sitting great now. And this happens a lot. Dredge wins game one and then just gets smashed games two and three because it is it is a tough deck to win through hate. Although very powerful if they don't have the right configuration of magic cards. Okay, so I think we're just gonna go Prairie Stream, but that leaves us greenless. So maybe just Breeding Pool, take two. We, we're not too worried about our life total. 
it maybe gave it away a little bit that we have something, but all right, we're gonna bring this into play. Living weapon. Now, if they do a ancient grudge though, they can actually do some damage to us. Luckily they don't. Now, if they do have ancient grudge here, we probably just force a negation it because it does exile it. Now we can't do anything else if we just hard cast this. So maybe we just want to exile deputy here. Oh yeah, it's not our turn. Of course we have to cast. It's not their turn. That force only counters it like that on your opponent's turn, of course. So that does work. Perfect, now we get to go like this and have a spell pierce at least. Not a ton of uh, disruption, but still a fine, uh, fine turn. Nature's claim too? Well, we need it. We need it, unfortunately. And this just this card just might not be that good later on. So, spell pierce it. All right, now we still got their dredge under control, but now they kind of have free reign. So now I'm a little more worried, but I think keeping Batter Skull alive was more important, but who knows, maybe it just was a better idea to let it go and then stop the dredgers and just win off our value creatures. But if Batter Skull just lives, they just can't win. It's just too good. Okay, and nothing here uh, gives me a, 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 some relief. Okay, only one green mana here, so I think we would rather get an Oracle down versus a Noble. So we're gonna go with an Oracle. If we hit a green mana, then we can play it as well. Now this could definitely be another case of destroying Batter Skull here, which in that case, I'd rather attack with both, but yeah, actually it's still just better. The one extra life point is not that big of a deal. Maybe it would have even been better to just attack with Mystic, that seems rough. Boom, our opponent's just like, well, I can't beat that. I can't beat a 4-4 four, four lifelinker when I'm at nine. All right, everyone, this deck is nice. I'm hyped to play more rounds. Stay tuned for round two. All right, and welcome to round two here with Bant, Soul Herder, with some Stove Forge Mystics. And oh my, this hand is terrible. Absolutely terrible. No lands, not a chance we can keep. We're on the draw again, unfortunately. I'm gonna keep this. This hand is awkward because if we don't hit a second land, it, it's, it's a lot worse, but we have two draws at it. Plus we can uh, Ice Fang Quaddle to um, draw another card if need be. We're gonna keep, and we get to just put back this Batter Skull since we have Stoneforge anyways. So that was kind of a free mulligan essentially anyways. I mean, obviously a land would be better. Okay. Gotta be Grixis Death Shadow when they bobble themselves like that. Could be Urza as well, I suppose. But I would imagine Grixis Death Shadow, which makes this even more terrifying. Uh, because if this dies, you know, of course we're in trouble. So green-white is what we'd want. But we need it to be untapped. So I think we're just gonna have to go with Breeding Pool. Hope this lives. Which, if it's Grixis Death Shadow, I doubt it. If it's Urza, probably will live. Okay, it's definitely Death Shadow. They just took two for no reason. <laughs> this might be a good matchup. This might not be. I'm not 100% sure on this one. Okay, they had to have just drawn that. Otherwise, they would have cast it. Leave Noble alone. Yes! Okay. Well, I could go with Mystic, but then they know I don't have a land. I think I'm going to go with Oracle. It's the only one that makes sense if we hit a land. All right. I don't like either option, but what can you do? Because even if we hit a land off this and we don't play a land, they know we don't have a land. They'd still probably try to kill Noble. But, you know, we're still getting two more looks. One look off Oracle and then drawing next turn at another land so we could cast spells. But yeah, that was not an ideal draw. Time wipe, time warp might have been the worst possible draw. I mean, we do have like pass and stuff for Grixis for Death Shadow. So maybe this matchup is actually okay. We do probably just have too much value for them to keep up with. Grixis Death Shadow is really good at dealing with creatures on a one-for-one -one basis, but when all these creatures are gaining you value and you don't want to kill like culling oracles and stuff, it, it tends to be a lot better. And now we can actually witness back a land. So this might be a Chromatic Angler and we'll path, we will path that immediately. And we need to start getting some snow permanents if we want uh, Ice Fang to do some work. Could path that. I think it might be important to path that, actually. 
Now they might just go angler after that. Yeah. Oh, I don't think we can path. Yeah, I don't think we have the lands to do so. But we can just get a Vista into play tapped. So we would have not sacked that, but I was sacking it thinking that there's a temple garden or something, but of course there's not. Couple of shadows. So now we can witness back a land to have a land for next turn, or we can go Mystic plus Path. We don't really want to cast Quattle right now because it will not have Death Touch, so we got to start working on our Snow Permanence. This is interesting. It might just be best to go Mystic and Path one of these Death Shadows. Getting Mystic down does seem pretty important. But making land drops is also important. So this is tough. Let's think of this. Okay. Eternal Witness back a land. It leaves us with having access to for sure four mana next turn. And then we could go like Stoneforge Mystic plus Path or Stoneforge plus Ice Fang Quaddle. Um, but Quaddle still wouldn't have Death Touch. So I don't, I don't really love our turn four or our next turn that much. I think it's just better Mystic, Path, and then if we draw a land, great. If not, we just get to um, play, put in a Batter Skull. All right, and we'll go just get more than likely just to play ins here. All right. So we're going to get Batter Skull. Let's play Flooded Strand. Ship it back. All right. So now we have a Mystic. Oracle, getting these Death Shadows big. Now I think we have to path in response. Just because, well, Stubborn Denial can still get them, unfortunately, but it's a little brutal. Now, what do they take? Probably just Batter Skull. But if we draw a land, we can go Witness plus Path, one of these. Yep. So they must have the answer to that. Do we chump at this stage? Probably. Yeah. Maintain our life total a little bit. Okay, that wasn't bad. So we really have no choice but playing Ice Fang, drawing a card, and then more than likely just putting Batter Skull into play. Ooh, that's interesting. Interesting, but still probably not what we have to do right now. We better sack this now. Let's get another blue. And now we can bring in a batter skull and hopefully stay alive. Now we just have lethal. Well, no, we don't. Have to just throw this batter skull in. We probably just have to chump with this. Culligan's command would be game. Culligan's command is just game. Yeah, Culligan's command is a great answer to batter skull. That's for sure. All right. Heading to game two. Brutal. Brutal. We could have pathed during our turn to avoid Stubborn Denial, and maybe we just had to do that. Apparently. All right, we'll bring in Purge. We'll bring in Thrag Tusk. We don't have a ton for this matchup, but I do honestly think this, this matchup should be pretty good. I don't really want Knight of Autumns. Everything else seems to be pretty good. We just outvalue them, deal with their creatures on a one-for-one -one basis, we just have to kind of get under their removal spells. Um, and we just didn't do that last game. I could see maybe Spell Pierce. Spell Pierce seems pretty good. Uh, time Warp is probably not good enough. And Scavenging Ooze could be okay. I would love to go first. We're going to keep. It has a little bit of problems, but turn two Stoneforge Mystic. But if we do get Thoughtseize, it's a little worse. That's why make sure to play an island here. Just in case we get Thoughtseize, they take Mystic, and then we draw a green source for Ice Fang. That was bad. That was a bad draw. All right, we'll go get Batter Skull. All right, now our next draw step is going to be pretty important. And if Stoneforge Myst Mystic doesn't die, then it's a little worse if we or not as bad as if we don't draw another land because we'll still have something to do. But if it dies, which I'm sure they have a removal for it, and we don't draw a land, we just do nothing. We probably just lose this game then. Even if we draw a land and Stoneforge Mystic dies, though, just going Soul Herder is not very good either. Takes the two, shocking. Oh, okay. I mean, Jace is a great magic card, but 
Ugh. What can we do? Not much. Could path this if we want. Stop it from flipping. Maybe, but it feels pretty bad. I think we're just gonna let it flip. They have Culligan's Command once again. It's just so bad, but don't think we have much of a choice. I still stand by the keep, even though we had three essentially blank draws in a row. Um, but we did take a little bit of a risk on it. Death Shadow resolves. All right, time to bring the skull. Our opponent is either just not too concerned about it or doesn't have much to do about it. Now it's the question is if we attack or not, and I think you just have to. Our opponent can just block with Jace here. I'm gonna attack. Yep, just doing the block, draw discard plan. I think this is fine. I just wanna uh, bring a Sword of Feast and Famine into play and hopefully connect and kind of cheat on mana uh, that way. But of course, we once again really needed a land there. All right, here it comes. That's dead. Now we really don't have anything to do. This is a nice thing where more force of negations would have been good. So I'll, I'll preach this until the end of this uh, league. Force of negation, force of negation, force of negation. Add more of them to this deck. Either in the main deck or the board. I could even see three, one, but two and two is probably correct. All right, now an active Jace plus Death Shadow is out of range from this germ. I'm a little more frightened now. A wee bit more frightened. Now I'm now I'm not just frightened, I'm just dead. Now being able to like flash back Culligan's command, stuff like that. We gotta try to just deal with Death Shadow. Now if we top deck a green source, maybe we can go Quaddle plus Path. Now I mean we just have to hope Path works. <laughs> We, uh, we have not uh, had some friendly draws here, I have to say. I mean, if this doesn't work now, they just get to command us to death, so we just have to go for it now. Get Stubborn Denial and lose the game. Boo! If this does work, you know, we have a chance of doing something more, but yeah, we're just dead. Boo! Well, our draws were not good to us that game. We kept a two-lander, it's turn five. We had five draws at a land. Even a land there, being able to go Ice Fang Quaddle, have Snow Permanence block, plus path. Like, they would have Stubborn Denial for one, and if they had removal for Ice Fang Quaddle, we still probably would have lost. We needed a little bit earlier, but what can you do? All right, stay tuned for our third and final round. And welcome to our third and final round here with Bant Soul Herder. All right, we're on the play, finally. Okay, this is a deck that is... Definitely gonna benefit from being on the play, as is really any deck in Modern, if we're gonna be real, but yeah, all right, this hand is awesome. We will definitely keep this. Now the question is what we wanna search up first, and I think we just wanna get a basic forest. So we'll sacrifice this Vista. All right, get Noble Hierarch into play. We don't have a lot of Nobles, because you know you do not wanna flood on that card in this deck, um, but having it on turn one is insane. Okay, a witness here, or we just get Soul Herder down. It's a tough one, because we don't really need the land here with witness, but I think we just want to get Soul Herder down, plain and simple. So we're just going to get an island, get Soul Herder, start getting that large. Soul Herder will blink, and even if it dies, we do get to just witness it back. <coughs> so I'm guessing Scape Shift, Primeval Titan kind of stuff here, which uh, probably is not a good matchup for us. Probably not. Really got to try to be combo orientated against them, which is not always easy. All right, we'll go with the Ice Fang Quaddle. Batter Skull is not ideal. We'll go with the Noble. We'll just start drawing a ton of cards with Ephemerate and Soul Herder here, and maybe we can find some interaction, but this matchup is pretty bad. I will not lie to you. No blocks, huh? Okay. Interesting. Now we're gonna do this now before Lightning Bolt becomes a thing. So we're going to, oh, we actually should have did it before because this would have been plus one extra point of damage. Now that's unfortunate. Keep forgetting that it, it, it gets counter no matter what. Okay, draw a card, draw another card. At this point, we'll just find a path to get through and maybe kill them quite quickly. No interaction now, no force, anything like that. So, okay. Now we will ephemerate the Quaddle. 
Draw another card. Ephemerate just has so much value in this deck, it's insane. Calling Oracle. Another Ephemerate. We can go Witness, get back a land, so we make our land drop. I don't know how important that really is. And then Ephemerate plus like Culling Oracle and just get all the value here. I don't think we're gonna die next turn, but it is a possibility, four or five. No, not really, we're gonna live. So let's just try to set up in a way where we win the turn after. Maybe we just go Culling Oracle, Fangquaddle, and Ephemerate. And maybe we can find a path to sneak in some extra damage here. We're going to try that. Or maybe even a Knight of Autumn right here would be great. Dealing with this. Okay, no such luck. Now the question is, do we go Witness, get a land back, or Quaddle plus Ephemerate? I think it's Witness, get a land back, and Ephemerate. Yeah, let's do that. So unfortunately, they're gonna get a nice block here. They're going to get a very nice block here. Chump, sack. And can we present lethal next turn? Seven, that's gonna go to eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Don't think it's there. Unless we go soul herder and can get a land off ephemerate. But then again, ephemerate does blink twice as well. I think we just have to go witness here. Get back a land. Doesn't really matter because we're going to get either Canopy Vista. Probably just Vista here. We'll say go. We're going to blink. We'll blink the Oracle. That way if it's a land, it goes into play instead of going to our hand, which we really don't want right now. A path? Not bad. Not bad. Now we can go Ephemerate again. This gets up to seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. Yeah, we're well off lethal. Now we're gonna go Ephemerate. Probably Culling Oracle here. Now we just want to find a Knight of Autumn to deal with this. So we will Ephemerate again. Or a force. But yeah, prime time would uh, take us down. Yup. Not getting what we wanted here. Yeah, no lethal. So we're just going to be up to the mercy of our opponent's draw. We don't really have much we can do here. We can witness back an ephemerate. No, because we can blink to get an Ephemerate. Um, anything that gives us a chance to draw Knight of Autumn now, I think is what we have to do. And unfortunately, that only includes Ice Fang Quaddle here. So we're going to do that. Try to find some more interaction for this. No such luck. Um, I guess we still play it. Maybe if we can gain some life here to just get out of range a little bit. Doesn't seem very possible to me. So maybe we just, yeah, let's just Culling Oracle, I guess. Deputy, one card away. No, that would have been great if we would have uh, seen that when we still could cast it. So now we're gonna blink Witness. Witness gets us Ephemerate. All right, get the stack over here. Now we could Ephemerate again. Let's see what we need to do. We can just Ephemerate Witness again and then get an Ephemerate. Get rid of a Mystic and uh, a Mystic. Mystic's not gonna do anything. All right, let's see what we can do. Now any land triggers double Valakut, triple Valakut. We might not be dead though. So that's not a prime time coming at us this turn. Just killing stuff. All right, well, we might as well so they're killing this. I'm assuming we're dead. Six to the face. So, all right, we'll ephemerate uh, Culling Oracle in response. Get a counter. Still does not do much here. We're gonna float a white. All right, we don't, we don't die to like a far seek or anything here. Probably going to second main phase for our mana pool to drain. 
Now what's what's the punishment? All right. Yeah, cuz they just Yeah, we're dead. Super dead. <clears throat> Boo. All right. Well, what do we have for this matchup? Knight of Autumn's pretty good against Prismatic Omen. Stainful Stroke is pretty good. Path is not very good. Prime time, if it if it touches down, we just lose anyways. Probably gonna do a spell pierce here. We'll try this. This could not be a good matchup. All right, I'd love to go first. It's a keeper. All right, Noble Hierarch on one is gonna be good. We have been fortunate to draw Noble on one, but our, our sequencing of uh, the way we drew the rest of our spells last game just didn't quite add up. We are always like one turn deep, like we draw a path right after we needed it to clear a blocker. Um, just get Stoneforge Mystic down. Here I kind of think we're gonna just go with the sword. That way, if we top deck a land, we can go sword, equip to noble, attack. No, I guess we can't do that. Still, I think sword is better. We can Ice Fang plus Ephemerate it. And then try to counter search. Search doesn't seem super important. But I do want to cast this right away to try to find a land. And we did, so maybe now we don't actually want to Ephemerate. We might just want to slap a sword down and then control the draws from there. I kind of like that. Still not going to force this because we do have the answer to Primeval Titan plus now Scape Ship. So we kind of got the basis is covered a little bit. Gets those snow lands probably with no nothing to do with snows, but it's a snow world after all our Hogak summer. All right, so we'll, we'll go with this. Now, I think I want to go for the equipped. Lightning Bolt gets it. We're gonna equip on the other end. You got a double bolt. All right, get in there. Now, nothing severely bad can happen next turn. So maybe we just wanna get Soul Herder down because there's no prime time next turn. And the five drops aren't super scary yet either. So we can just soul herder here and go get batter skull, but that doesn't seem very good. I think we're just gonna actually still just get attackers down. Yeah, and if they go prismatic omen, we can just soul herder it then, but let's just get, get the beats down. Now we have force if need be. And now they're kind of in what, you, what what I like to call the abyss, where, you know, the, eventually their hand is going to be gone, so they're pressured to do stuff. We're okay with that. Our Ephemerate's not very good. Same with Soul Hoarder right now, now that we lost the Quaddle. That was our source of card advantage. All right, so there's the two lands. Scape Shift, not happening. All right, well, we're going to cast something. Let's cast a Soul Hoarder. Because our lands are going to untap. Get in there for seven. Now we're presenting lethal next turn as well as have uh, some disruption here. They discard. And we're just going to say go here. Now we can blink something. Um, yeah, we'll just blink Knight of Autumn. We're still just going to put the counters on it. We could just start trying to gain life. Yeah, let's actually do that. Let's just try to gain an absurd amount of life where that they can't just they just can't kill us. We're in one swing. But we do have counter magic as well. So now we have lethal on the table already without the plus one plus one counters. So now we have ephemerate to deal with prismatic omen at instant speed or plus counter spells. So this game should be ours. Summoners packed. Okay. We're gonna feel silly if they now go cavern of souls, but. If not, we got the stroke for this. <clears throat> GG. All right, game three. Anything else we can do here? I like taking out path. I, I wouldn't mind having access to some of them, but... Because you can still beat a Primeval Titan. It's tougher when they get to activate it once, but... 
Could see at least 3-1. All right, that's it, 3-1 there. Have one path for it. Okay, this is reasonable. Gonna keep this. Got a lot of counter magic. We can hold up Spell Pierce on the draw to get like a far seek, of course. If they go Sakura Tribe Elder, it's a lot worse. All right, we got a Mulligan now. And we'll ship it back. Disdainful Stroke is excellent here because most decks just can't counter creatures very effectively. Um, and it's really the only thing that does. We're definitely countering this. Slow them down in any way we can. We are the grindy deck, so if we can stop their initial assault, we can uh, draw enough cards to outvalue them. All right, it's just gonna be a quaddle turn here. They can't get up to something we can stroke. You got it this time. Okay. Don't have another land, because they could have played two lands this turn. So that's good. Now, we're just going to want a Witness here. Unfortunately, our Witness targets are not very good. Still better than not playing anything. Can get a Spell Pierce that they'll have to kind of maneuver around here for a while. All right. Search comes down to one Suspend. Just a hard cast Search. Reasonable. Wish we would have had the Spell Pierce available now, of course, but yeah, what can you do? Ooh, Soul Herder. Now that's great, don't get me wrong, but we can't really cast it because they do have the possibility to cast Prime Time. I mean, I, unless we just Spell Pierce their um, search, then they can't Prime Time. Okay, I like that. So we're gonna attack. They might have Lightning Bolt, which might be kind of like bait, but we still would have to let Lightning Bolt happen here. So we're just gonna go like this. We're gonna just bounce Fang Quaddle here. Draw a card. All right. So they could have a prime time in hand and if we let this search go and they draw a land, we're just dead. So we're gonna spell Pierce here. Pierce it. Pay two. <laughs> And then we can just Soul Herd plus Witness and keep bringing back Fang Quaddles, Disdainful Strokes. The combo that we have in play is enough to win the game um, just by the sheer value of it. Oh, wow. Okay, we'll attack for three. We'll even get to play a Noble this turn. All right, we're going to Blink Witness. Just Lightning Bolting my targets instead of the Soul Herder, huh? Interesting. Okay. Have to let that happen. The next witness will be able to at least get some value. <clears throat> but we can't play the long game too much with them because they can just play mountains and Valakut. All right. So now we'll get in there for two. Now let's try to see if we can set up lethal next turn. So two, three, four, five. Doesn't look like it's still going to be a two turn clock. Now let's get back everything we can here. So I want to get back Ice Fang Quaddle and move to End Step, go to Blink. This one worked. Now we'll get back Spell Pierce just as another way to interact. And then we'll say go. Now we can Ice Fang if they don't do anything productive. Or of course we have this Disdainful Stroke for Prime Time. Prime time. All right, so now we'll get a island. Cast the stroke. We'll get to bring stroke back next turn with this witness soul herder combo. That's just game. Now, if they have lightning bolt, it does break up the combo, but I think they would have cast it last turn. So we're going to risk it a little bit with this quaddle. All right. We just have it all now. Attack. Now we're gonna get a disdainful stroke. We could witness, get a land, and Stoneford Mystic. Okay, cool. We're gonna go like this. Witness back a Misty Rainforest. Sacrifice Misty Rainforest. Get a, doesn't matter. Get this, go with a stone forge, get a sword. We're doing things this game. Go.
go to end step, blink the witness, get disdainful stroke, get a counter, do all the actions, and now we got spell pierce plus disdainful stroke. Okay. Gets actually kill something. Yeah, I can't do anything about that. But we have enough threats on the field here that it's lethal. I guess we just die to that, huh? Oh wait, no, never mind. What am I thinking? Yeah, you just disdainful stroke that. I was like, oh yeah, I can't spell pierce the spell, but of course I can just stroke it. <laughs> I was like, oh no, uh, never mind. We're completely fine there. <laughs> All right, everyone. Well, that uh, concludes it for this uh, little deck primer on uh, Bant Soul Herder. I think the deck is real. It has a lot of game against everything. It, it's acting at a much slower pace than every other deck uh, in modern seems to be doing. With Stoneforge Mystic uh, coming up, the, the format has slowed down a lot. But there's still these modern decks that are just quick, fast. I didn't think there was a chance we were going to beat Scapeshift there, but we did fine. Same with Dredge. I, I wasn't really sure we were going to win there, but the deck just has the tools to outlast other decks. Stay tuned to the deck tech uh, where I'll go in depth about the specific card choices. See you then. And welcome to the deck tech here with Bant Soul Herder. All right, 2-1, not bad, not bad. I, did, I really did think we were going to struggle with some of uh, the matches that we played. Um, and to be honest, I kind of thought we were going to win round two. So, uh, it kind of, I, it didn't go exactly the way that I thought. But all right, let's talk about the specific, uh, cards in the deck and kind of why I like this deck. I, I think just Soul Herder is a really undervalued card right now. And I think Force of Negation is a really undervalued card right now. If we can get this engine going where we're getting so many cards and you don't have to have mana open to interact with your opponent. I think that is just a recipe for success right now. Now, there were some things I liked, some things I didn't like about the deck. And let's uh, let's start to go through them here. As far as the mana base, the mana base seemed pretty sweet. Um, having a good mixture of Snowlands, um, which is what you want to search up most of the time as your first uh, two lands. So that you can then go from Canopy Vista or Prairie Stream after you have two Snowlands in play doesn't always work out that way because sometimes you only have two lands and you need three different colors throughout them so sometimes you have to start with the breeding pool start with a vista something like that all right so we'll go to our one drops here we have ephemerate four of this a new card here um from modern horizon one and with hogak being banned we're really starting to see what um, what Modern Horizon impact has on the metagame. And I think over time, we're going to see people break it with the cards that aren't necessarily obvious from there, you know, like uh, Urza, uh, Lord High Artificer, Soul Herder. Uh, we're going to start to see these kind of cards, or Force of Negation. We're going to start to see the cards that are kind of sleepers, like Ephemerate. Ephemerate is an insanely powerful magic card. It just happens to be a common, so people kind of overlook it. Blinking a Calling Oracle is just one mana, draw two cards. Instant speed, essentially. I mean, it a little bit more hoops to jump through than that, but it also dodges removal. It does more than what it shows on the surface. And on the surface, it's pretty good. All right, then we got four Path to Exile. Not much you have to say about this card. Path is one of the best uh, removal spells in the format um, before the Hogak ban and now after. Only two Noble Hierarchs. This is what I thought was a little weird when I saw this list, but it makes sense. You need to have these targets that have come into play abilities. And while it is excellent to ramp to a uh, three drop on turn two, it's not exactly what you want to be doing. You, you most of the time want to be casting Stoneforge Mystic on two instead of hustling out a Soul Herder and then blinking Noble Hierarch. So I like two. I could even see the deck slowing down and maybe getting rid of them, but for now I like two. Three Stone Forge Mystic. The blade is loose, and I really wanted to try it. I think it's awesome in this deck. It's not that good at getting blunk, blunk, blinked by uh, Soul Herder, but it is just a great magic card that is uh, starting to warp the format again now that it's getting the unbanned. And just a good way to uh, have game against two kind of different strategies. Decks where you want to be attacking their hand, Sword of Feast and Famine's insane. Any aggressive deck, Batter Skull usually takes it down. Uh, then we'll go to our valley, value creatures. Calling Oracle and Ice Fang Quaddle are the, the musts include for me. 
They're just uh, what you want to be doing on turn two. They set up for Soul Herder very well, where, you know, you go your two drop that draws you a card into Soul Herder, and then you get this uh, engine of card advantage that's going to be continually supplying you cards throughout the entire game as long as it doesn't get disrupted. And we'll, uh, we'll talk about the disruption here shortly. And then two watcher for tomorrow. That one I was also like, ah, I'm gonna cut that immediately. But then I'm like, ah, you know, it could be pretty sweet with Ephemerate. And it's insane. I mean, you play watcher, you go find a force and negation, Ephemerate it, get force and negation to your hand. So then the next turn you can go get whatever card you choose again. The value is just very quick with that engine. So I think watcher actually could be a couple more copies in the deck. Speaking of a couple more copies in the deck, Force of Negation should be a four of. This card, there should be four of this card. Stoneforge Mystic plus Force of Negation. They're friends, even though, you know, they don't pitch each other to Force of Negation. They, the way the games play out, you really want to be protecting Stoneforge, but you also need to use your mana on the first few turns. Force of Negation fills that role very well. And then we got the namesake of the deck, Soul Herder. Able to blink everything. It's just the reason the deck exists. Uh, it's called Bant Soul Hoarder for a reason. The card is busted. There's every single game I play, I'm learning new interactions you can do. I mean, blinking out Night of Autumn when you're in a race situation, just keep gaining life every turn, destroy some artifacts, blink Eternal Witness, and then with blinking Eternal Witness and Time Warp, it's just infinite. You take infinite turns as long as they don't disrupt you. Then we got some fun ofs here, Deputy of Detention, Sword of Feast and Famine, Batter Skull, and Time Warp, like I said. They all serve a purpose, and Batter Skull and Sword aren't really one ofs with Stoneforge in the deck. Um, and then a couple of Knight of Autumns, because destroying artifacts is still pretty relevant right now. Destroying enchantments occasionally comes up, uh, as well as gaining life, and just a big creature from time to time. It's not an insane card or anything, but it serves its utility. All right, we'll move to the sideboard here. All right, we'll start with the Celestial Purge. Dealing with Death Shadow, uh, good against Burn. It's okay. I, I'm not I'm not jumping for joy about Celestial Purge. Only two rest in peace. And most people would be like, modern? Only two rest in peace? Are you insane, Corey? Well, the Hogak, uh, and, and I'm not taking credit for this list. I copied this list uh, off online um, from somebody who 5-0'd and... Um, and this is what it had, but I liked it. I liked uh, what it did. But two rest in peace, I think, is much more normal right now because Hogak isn't running everywhere. Dredge got nerfed a lot by losing Faithless Looting. We did see Dredge kind of, uh, you know, still stay alive in round one with uh, Time Scour, Tome Scour. I get that card wrong so many times. Um, but the deck is worse, plain and simple. And then Stony Silence here, uh, pretty good against Tron, um, good against all these affinity-based decks. Urza, very good. We didn't play against that, but that's kind of the boogeyman of the format. And then I like this card. I don't think it's good enough. I would probably cut this. Uh, Stonehorn uh, Digni Dignitary. St shutting down combat phases, and with Soul Herd, you can shut down combat phases for good. What decks is this going to really be good against? I mean, I guess like Infect, you know, maybe Burn, but they can interact with Soul Herder pretty easily. I don't like it. I wouldn't play it anymore. Add more Force and Negations instead. Ceremonious Rejection, good against Urza, good against Tron, good against uh, uh, Affinity. And then Spell Pierce here. Spell Pierce is great. I think maybe we should have more of those. Disdainful Stroke is also very good. You saw it come in handy against Scapeshift last round. Basically won us the game. Uh, we won the game... Games two and three on the back of Disdainful Stroke. All right, Scavenging Ooze. As a one of, I find it pretty random. This is another card I probably would uh, uh, go against. Thrag Tusk, a very good card. If you're if you're blinking out Thrag Tusk with Soul Herder, you are probably winning the game if it's an aggro deck. And then one more Knight of Autumn if we need to for Urza, for um, you know any kind of bridge decks. Aether Vile, humans, you probably want it. Um, burn, gain some life. It has its utilities. So that's the deck there. We'll talk about the matchups a little bit here. I touched on them a little bit here, but round one, we played against Dredge. Something I didn't think we'd do very well against. Game one, you basically can't win. That happened to us. We got beat pretty badly. And then games two and three, we drew hate cards, played out of it. Uh, the deck, the deck, 
one of the hate cards was just drawing Stoneforge Mystic. They had a tough time dealing with Batter Skull, um, and we were able to have a couple timely rest in peace as well to get us done there. Grixis Death Shadow, we just got destroyed. Plain and simple, we got beat bad. Um, I thought the matchup was going to be better because we were going to outvalue them so much. But really, they just set up that one turn where they got to play two Death Shadows, put us on the back foot, killed stuff, and like we just weren't able to set up like I thought like I thought we could. Maybe it's not a good matchup. And then we just played Scape Shift last round. The sideboard cards were great. Once again, game one, we lost pretty badly. Um, but then Disdainful Strokes were MVPs. And we were able to just control them with Soul Herder, comboing off with Eternal Witness to get the job done. So, all right, everybody, um, that's it for this week's Drop and Bomb. Thank you so much for watching. We'll be back next week with some more Drop and Bombs action. See you then.